everyone, and welcome to this week's supplemental lecture. In this lecture, I'm actually going to be going over some concerns that have been addressed, um, particularly regarding quiz number three, and then also just general successful strategies that you might want to adopt in order to negotiate this class if you haven't done so already. First thing I want to discuss is week's, week three's quiz. I've gotten a few emails from students who have been performing poorly on quizzes overall and specifically thrown through a loop uh, for week three's quiz. So again, I want to turn back to the question at hand. Week three's quiz asked you how one turns an audience's anger into, recep into receptiveness. As we know from reading and from our lecture, Getting an audience to be receptive is one of the most important things that you want to do, according to Cicero. The correct answer for this week's quiz was passive voice, backfire or the mea culpa, and humor, which takes the form of either urbane, wit, or facetious or banter. Now, identifying these tools, as well as describing and explaining them, was a good way to, was the correct way actually, to gain all 10 points. Again, look at the language of the question. It asked you to t how one turns an audience's anger into receptiveness. Now, using the passive voice makes something appear as if it happened on, on its own, and therefore assuages blame. It happened rather than I caused it to happen. This turns your audience into a receptive one because they're more focused on how to accomplish, say, a particular go of goal of preventing something from happening in the future, rather than, of course, laying blame. The backfire, or mea culpa, which literally means my fault, exaggerates emotion to such an extent that the audience has to pause and says, really, whoa, the issue is not that important. Don't go overboard. Humor, as we have discussed briefly in the past, eases tension in the audience. It makes them more relaxed and willing to listen to what you have to say. Urbane humor relies on puns. Wit relies on situational humor. Facetiousness has to do with actual joke telling. And, of course, banter is the stuff of snappy comebacks, such as the Yo Mama jokes. Some of you answered the quiz using uh, the tools that one would use to rouse an audience to anger in order to get them to act. Anger, storytelling, belief, patriotism, emulation, etc. are all ways in which you can get your audience roused and on their feet, not ways to get them to be relaxed and receptive to what you have to say. Some of you also answered the quiz question by talking about the reluctant conclusion, personal sacrifice, and the dubitatio. These have to do with selfless goodwill or disinterest. And this was actually the answer to the Blackboard Prompt for week three. Uh, so if some of you missed points for Blackboard Prompt three, it could be one of three things. A, your first answer to the prompt was incorrect. B, your response and your response to appear were both posted on the same day. Or C, your responses, either one or both, were less than 200 words. Uh, again, you want to make sure that you are following the directions for each assignment. Otherwise, you will lose points. I want to take this moment, as we are starting week five and roughly one-third into the semester, to check in with you guys and remind you that, uh, uh, as you recall from our intro video to this course, that online courses can be more difficult and demanding than face-to-face -face courses as they rely almost completely on the discretion of the student, you know, making sure that you guys are allotting enough time to view the lectures, to do the reading, um, and, of course, to complete your assignments. This burden might be a little too much or too overwhelming for some of you. I understand that many of you work at least part-time, if not full-time, and are taking online classes because they fit better into your schedule and or are a matter of convenience. I get that completely, but again, you must remember that um, these are not necessarily easier courses to take just because they are more convenient for your schedules. I also want to let you know that I am available in my office this week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, from 2 to 3 p.m. if you'd like to drop by and have some FaceTime. 
If you are unable to meet physically with me but still have concerns and questions, we can Skype, we can do Google+, Plus, we can also do FaceTime if you have an iPhone, as I do. Um, so there are a number of different options for contacting me if you would like some more FaceTime. I am here to help and my overall goal is to see each and every one of you succeed. I have no interest in failing anyone. Um, so please, if you are find if you do find yourself struggling in the course right now, it might be a good time to honestly look at whether or not you feel like you can move on in the course and successfully negotiate it. Um, again, I am interested in everyone succeeding and by no means want anyone to drop the course if they feel that they can move on successfully. But if you feel like you can't, please know that there is absolutely no shame in dropping the course and taking it either online at a later date or face to face. Some of you just might need that. Um, with that in mind, the last day to drop um, without permission or petition, as it were, is October 25th. If you have any questions regarding whether or not you should be considering this as an option, please, again, feel free to reach out to me. I am more than willing to help each and every one of you, but you have to let me know that you need the help, okay? So, again, uh, please feel free to contact me at any point in time um, so we can meet face-to-face -face or online or whatever. Um, and with that, I hope this clarifies some matters that you have from week three specifically and also uh, going on in the course. Have a great day, and I will see each and every, every one of you very soon.